Hello guys, as creatives, fashion designers, pattern maker, beaders, embroidery makers and all of that. Now there is a particular tool that we all use in our work and that's the scissors. Now it's amazing that many of us don't really know a lot about the scissors. We just go to the market and buy what we think is good or what we think we like. We don't know exactly what scissors does the job and what does not. So I was speaking to one of my online students a couple of days ago. Uh, we're talking about different types of scissors and i realized that that's one major thing i've like always not bothered to talk about because i just didn't think it was major and i just realized how major it was so i thought to make a video to tell you guys about the scissors and different types of scissors so i recently just um ordered this set of scissors so you see this has like different types of scissors they're actually like different different types of scissors that you need to use to carry out your task and i mean as a dressmaker you need to have like different types because they all do different things and i'm going to be showing you what these scissors do like there are different types of them now before we go into talking about different types of scissors um i just want to explain something quickly sometimes when you're trying to read about scissors online you will see sometimes you come across the watch here so instead of scissors at times you see the word shares and sometimes you should see the word scissors so i want to differentiate between these two words for scissors you will see that the space or the o for both handles is the same so if you look at this you can see these two are the same but if you look at this you see this is one big one and this is one small one so for the scissors you see they should be the same and for the shares there's a small one and there's a bigger one that is one that is one differentiation now the second differentiation for the scissors the blades are usually under six inches long so the blades are not so long for scissors so anything under six inches you can describe it or categorize it as a pair of scissors anything longer than six inches you can categorize it as shears also when you're buying scissors you want to pay attention you know to whether the scissors is for right-handed creatives or for left-handed creatives because there are some scissors that if you're left-handed you will struggle with using because it was made for people who are right-handed except you're ambidextrous and you can use both left and right and but otherwise you want to pay attention to that and you know check if the scissors you're buying is for right-handed people or for left-handed people now i'm going to show you the different types of scissors and what they do so i've got five different types of scissors in and i'm going to be telling you what they all do we're going to start from the smallest piece now the smallest piece is what you call the embroidery scissors this is the smallest one and it's called the embroidery scissors it's very similar to what you'll find you know maybe in a doctor's office or what you see in your um babbin kits and oh it's a small one and it's small and precise because it can serve to cut the tiny pieces of thread that you have in embroidery so this is really good for embroidery it's really nice for embroidery you'll find it very useful it is small and you know the blades are small as well it can go into corners and all so this is the embroidery scissors anytime you see a scissors like this just know it's the embroidery scissors it's usually the smallest and really cute and nice it's not for cutting fabric it's the embroidery scissors now the next after it which is just um slightly bigger than the embroidery scissors this is the next after it but you will note that the blade is slim and long now this scissors is the needlework scissors this one is basically for needlework and it's pointed and you know small and it's very useful because when you're trying to do needlework it can like go really flat on your stitch and then cut to like the barest minimum sometimes when you're trying to do needlework and you try to use your regular scissors to do it you see that it doesn't entirely cut all the way to the knot it doesn't cut down to the knot you still see that there are still some threads you know after the knot so this one is just perfect for cutting you know when you're doing your needlework so this is the scissors you should use for needlework we're going to the next type of scissors and it is this one now this is your craft scissors the craft scissors is like the kind the one that you can use anyhow if you don't have a scissor set you can just buy any regular cheap scissors 
and convert it to your craft scissors because the craft scissors is the one you used to call paper is what you used to call pattern paper as well it's what you used to call anything you can use it for anything so you can like treat it anyhow <laughs> i didn't say you should treat your scissors anyhow but yeah like this is the kind of scissors that you kind of use that way so it's the craft scissors it doesn't have to be pricey or anything now we're going to the next one which is a dressmaker scissors now this one it's like the all-purpose one it's for dressmaking and you can see it's just cute and nice now this is just i'm showing you they're like for left hand and right hand so you can either use it this way right or use it this way you know it's for boats you know because of the positioning of the blade and the way they've done the grip handle so yeah this is what you use for like regular sewing project and that's what you call the dressmaker scissors so this scissors right here is like the all-purpose scissors i like it a lot i like to use it for cutting light fabrics it's like a dressmaker scissors and then it's really nice and good now this is another dressmaker scissors that we have but this is the one that is more similar the heavy duty ones there's a metallic equivalent to this i've shown it on the channel before i had a gold one so those ones are like heavy duty scissors like when you hold them they're like really heavy and then you see that many people when they use it as well they've got this black thing on their knuckles from constant use of the scissors so if you don't want to have that you can buy this one as the equivalent for your cotton scissors your basic cotton shares So these are the two dressmaking scissors that I use. You know, this is the craft scissors on purpose. This one right here is the one for needlework and this is one for embroidery. Of course, there are other types of scissors. Like you have the pinking shears. The pinking shears is the one that you use for zigzag cutting. That's the one we call the zigzag scissors. It's actually called the pinking shears. And you also have other types of decorative scissors that can do corners and other types as well. You know, you have scissors that can cut leather so we call those ones leather shears we have rotary cutters and we have cutting machine so basically that's like a summary for different types of scissors that we have i hope you've learned something from this class and i'll see you in the very next one if you have to do fashion do it well the choice of a fashion school is very very important when you're trying to pursue a fashion career TEP is one of the formal centers for fashion learning in Africa. Um, we pride ourselves greatly in the quality of teaching that we offer. International standard, um, we have a great environment that's, um, that's just fantastic for creativity. We have fantastic teachers. I have been sewing myself for the past 22 years and it's I've gained a lot of knowledge over the years and I'm just so eager always um, to pass this knowledge across to people who take fashion seriously and are eager to learn about professional fashion. You should come to our fashion school. You should choose TFB.